Hello, hello, and welcome back to the 3 at Moon livestream, everybody. It's Tuesday, December 28th, 2021, and uh, today we're going to be playing a bunch of N64 racing games, maybe some Super Nintendo racing games, but uh, I stream every single day from 6 p.m. Pacific onward. I usually do retro games, play randomizers of retro games, or even have a, re a regular series called the Retro Roulette. And earlier today, um, I started our second Mario RPG playthrough. We started a full playthrough of Paper Mario. And it got me thinking about just how nostalgic I was uh, for the N64 and growing up with my cousins playing N64 games. So we're going to be playing a bunch of games that I used to play with my cousins growing up. So very nostalgic. Um, hopefully there's no issues with video and audio. It's having a little bit of a hiccup there, but we're not going to have any alerts or sound effects active for this stream, unfortunately. But we're going to be starting off with Cruise and World, which is a Midway developed 1998 arcade game. A sort of a port of uh, an arcade racing game that you could typically see at like movie theater arcades and arcades in general growing up or at least that's something that i experienced <clears throat> so stick around we've got cruising world up next on the n64 thanks for hanging out all right you should be able to see me and you should be able to see the game in just a second and hear it Let's do this. Fingers crossed that everything's working. Just open the theme songs. Let me know if you need more game audio at all, or if it's too loud. Let's go. I know this game was, or at least this uh, sequel in this same series, um, in the Cruisin' series, was released or re-released for the Nintendo Switch recently. There's also Cruisin' USA. So got some options. We got the Serpent, Kamikaze, <clears throat> All-Terrain Vehicle, the Scarab. I used to use the Scarab a lot. The Stallion, the Banzai, the Zombie I used to use a lot too. The Orca. And the El Nino is another one I used a lot. This one looks like Wario's car to me. <laughs> Wario's pimp car from Wario Land 4. <clears throat> yes, the three-wheel truck, the Sardine Extreme. This is funny. Okay, so let's, uh, I think what we're going to do is we'll start with... How about that? <clears throat> Excuse me. And so if you do cruise the world, it's going to just take you around the world to different tracks, like arcade style. Let me know if I need to adjust audio levels at all, at any time, because it's easy to do. I always like the music here. It was like a jungle-themed James Bond soundtrack. The physics of the cars colliding in this was always so ridiculously unrealistic, and it kind of reminded me of like if you just whipped two Hot Wheels cars at each other really fast. It's kind of funny. <clears throat> the elephant and then the jazz piano. So yeah, I used to play these games a ton with my cousins growing up. Um, I was never really good at these at this game specifically. But it was a very often played game for sure. <laughs> like, that's ridiculous, right? Like we completely stopped in our tracks. There we go, 
don't want to mess with the, the uh, camera too much. When you get in those pile laps, it, it's basically like bumper cars at that point. <clears throat> Hard luck. Okay. <clears throat> Got our nice little uh, funk riff going on. Let's play it again. So you're better off even just hitting the, the side rails than colliding with another car. It doesn't slow you down as much. There's no way I would have survived that. That was a little bit nuts. qualifies, I'll take it. like this uh, this map and the music too <clears throat> you start to be able to do tricks in certain tracks as well like that flip Oh, 
Yes! We somehow hopped over that car. We clipped right through it. Third again. That's fine. That's okay. Gotta honk to the music. <laughs> Those people are not surviving. <laughs> Number one, don't stand at the like in the race. Stand on the sidelines, please. Grind a rail? This is Tony Hawk's World Cruiser. I mean, we're technically doing manuals constantly like this. like things are running smoothly video-wise, which is great.
tons of cars. It's like Twisted Metal. It's just a destruction derby. just hear some water or the faucet running and stuff. My partner is doing some painting Checkpoint. right next to me. Mega roll and we didn't land it. Oh well. It's 100% because I looked away. Might have been my chance. Yep, I think that was our chance. We gotta do it again. From the top. It's tough to try and take those check those uh, shortcuts or what seem like shortcuts, the little dirt roads. Two blue bells just make me think of Christmas. <clears throat> yes. No. Right at the last second. Right at the last second. That sucks. <clears throat> we were there. And when we were there, we were there. time. like this this game's physics is.
that is funny. can actually grind on the rails there, it's so funny. Even the opponents, not just us. I also love that they looked at this and went, yeah, that's that's clean and refined enough as a physics engine. We can release this time. And charge money. And to be honest, it's actually very fun. Because of the uh, sandboxy sort of Hot Wheels car vibe to the way these things uh, behave. And the bumper car, bumper cars vibes. Almost as bad as GTA 3. There's people constantly screaming. Had to hold on to your, your place. It's the only way to do it. That's great. jamming along with the horn on the music. Actually, a longer time. It didn't beat our record time, but it still, but it qualified us for the next race. Okay, we're on to Kenya. Ready, set, go. <clears throat> like I said, this game was an arcade cabinet that you could find 
in like your local arcade back in the mid 90s. I had one in my local movie theater arcade. And in fact, one of my first jobs ever was working at that local movie theater and maintaining the arcade. It was part of my uh, daily responsibilities. And I used to play Cruise the World all the time. things about this game is you can unlock the moon as a playable level once you cruise the entire world. And there's an entire track that has anti-gravity physics <laughs> with the same amount of bumper car vibe that's going up here. Tree hitboxes are like so much wider than the actual trees. It's almost like they're as wide as the leaves are on the tree, not the not the trunk. some good food. A little food break. We had a food break as well. Um, I had a blast playing Paper Mario. We started it earlier today. And I'm glad you really enjoyed Dragon Ball Advanced Adventure. I, I played it actually twice now. I've played it as Goku and I've played it as Krillin. I haven't beaten it as Krillin. But through playing my second playthrough, there's actually a bunch of people on my stream that were letting me know that there's actually a bunch of unlockable characters. And the more you, you beat that game, the more you can unlock characters. And you can actually unlock every single individual enemy. Dragon Ball Advanced Adventure as a playable character. The wolf, the pterodactyl, you can actually play as these characters, which is really cool. Um, I thought it was just like, oh cool, you get to play as Krillin when you're done, but there's a ton of replayability in that game, and for anyone that doesn't really know about it, it's definitely worth checking out. If you're a fan of Dragon Ball or not, it's uh, a really hype beat -em up You described it well, it's a beat-em-up that turns into a fighting game with new boss fights, basically, like an arcade style fight. But now we're just uh, just messing around casually with some N64 racing games. I used to play this game a ton with my cousins growing up. It's a lot of fun. I used to suck at it as well. 
and it was this game that actually inspired me to get better at racing games. Um, we used to play Mario Kart 64 a lot, but we do battle mode, and Wave Race 64 I liked as well, but after this, I mean, a lot of my cousins, um, like, like, they would play games like Midtown Madness, and all the Need for Speed games, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, all these, like, awesome racing games, Gran Turismo, uh, was one that we played a lot together, Gran Turismo 1 and 2, and so the whole, um, I don't know, like, the entire of my childhood growing up, there was always car games, like, being played multiplayer, racing games were played multiplayer, so, uh, if it wasn't for this game, even though it's got, like, ridiculous bumper car physics, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be as good at, as racing, at racing games, that I to, and I'm not fantastic at that. We had to get third, so there's no way. There's no way. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2 was your favorite racing game when you were a kid? Yeah, that one was great. We had the first one, and then I also had the second one. And Need for Speed Underground actually was one of the first games I bought on the Wii. Which is so funny. What a hilarious, hilarious purchase. Ready, set, go! You just kind of have to bank on them having a little uh, collision bumper fest ahead of us and then us not being tangled in it or included in it. Checkpoint. ton of them all clustered close to each other so they could be they could bump into each other ahead of us and really screw us over decided to wear my leather jacket, which I never do. And it's not like I drive in real life, it's just like, it's the perfect thing to wear. Look, the, the entire, <laughs> the entire scoreboard is all me now because we've just done that many attempts and failed. Ready, set, Kenya? Apparently we go. can't. Apparently we cannot. K-E-N-N-E. E-O-T. No. <laughs> K-E-N-N-O-T. We cannot.
We're so close. Oh, damn. And there's an accident at the end there too. We could have done it. We could have done it. Need new music. <laughs> oh, I love how bumper car this game is. First person mode like this. No, thank you. Why would it zoom out? From the top. There's no restart button, unfortunately. didn't hit that draft. around the corner. Thank you so much for the follow. I don't have any um, of my alerts set up right now, but thank you 
Blake DMC 1989. Appreciate that. You still have this on your N64. I do too as well. Um, and actually, there was a sequel to this that I think came out on the Switch somewhat recently. But I used to play this all the time with my cousins. I love this one. Just, I was playing some Paper Mario earlier today. We were playing a full playthrough of it, and I just got really nostalgic for the N64. And there's just this like really playful, sort of sandboxy <laughs> Hot Wheels vibe to the way this game feels. It kind of reminds me of Micro Machines on the NES, which is another game that I used to mess around with a lot. Yeah, Cruising Blast, that's the newest one that came out, so I haven't played that one. I've just heard that it came out. I actually haven't even seen what it looks like or trailers or anything like that. But I used to spend a lot of time playing this one in Cruising uh, USA, in arcades, but also uh, mainly on N64 with my uh, cousin's card. We play competitively, usually two, two, three, or four player ratchet, uh, uh, races. And then um, we even got to the point where we unlocked the moon. An anti gravity stage that gets unlocked once you cruise the entire world. Which is pretty bad. I miss playing the arcade versions. I don't know how much of a difference there would be. Um, I can't remember too much of a difference, but I'm sure there's huge differences because. They're probably a little more powerful than the N64 ones. I'm just speculating. But yeah, a lot of these um, these cars are really nostalgic to me too, as well. Like the Scarab. We're trying to get to the third place, and I don't think it's going to happen in this this particular run. But let's see. Have, oh, Cruising Exotica. I don't think I've played that one, but I've heard of it as well. So yeah, just USA and World are the three that I played. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Wave Race 64 after this. You got a scare of that, that purple sort of beetle looking car. It's always one of my favorite stages. And that blue car as well, the blue muscle car. The zombie. Checkpoint. the way that some of these cars collide, it's ridiculous. <laughs> oh man, that's really funny. Uh, the arcade versions have huge differences, especially with Cruising USA and Exotica, where the arcade version of Cruising Exotica is the only version to run in 60 FPS on real hardware. Interesting, but not an emulation yet. Interesting. They also have Wave Race 64. Yeah, that one's that's that's a classic, and it always um, I always am surprised that Wave Race 64 soundtrack was. Um, done by Kazumi Totaka, who did all the music for the Wii Sports games, for Super Mario Land 2, Link's Awakening, all the Luigi's Mansion games, all the Animal Crossing games. 
just such a crazy, um, like, wide array of genres and games that they Ready, for. set, go! If you hold A and B together, you can drift on the N64 version of Cruising World. Oh, interesting. Oh, no way. That is interesting. Okay, that's a game changer. Thank you, Blake. Crazy. That is a game changer. Uh, Squeezy Teal, welcome to the stream. Well and truly about to throw some punches. My router just shat itself in the middle of the stream. Ah, oh, shoot. That sucks. That happened to us earlier, actually. We were playing some Paper Mario, and we just had like, a random internet hiccup that just happened. It seems to be working okay now, but it's always annoying, especially when you're trying to you know, squeeze the stream in or something like that. Hope you had some good holidays. Spruce, thanks for dropping in. What were you streaming? Yeah, there's some jankiness here for sure. That is interesting. That the drifting exists. I'll have to get used to that. playing on English and you don't remember the sound being scratching like yeah this one's um and everything and I'm not I don't have a way of uh, streaming my N64 specifically right now. But yeah there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a hiccup in some of the sound for sure. family for Christmas. Nice. I did the same thing. Yeah, it was good. Um, couldn't go do too many things. A lot of restrictions on our end here, but it's still a really good holiday season. It's still going quite well. Yeah. This happened in uh, in China as well, too. We just had to do the, the actual race a bunch of times, which is good. Well, glad to hear that you had a good uh, holiday season. You can re-tap B while holding A to change directions too. Oh. oh, interesting. So you can, yeah. I got you. It's almost like a hopping, but not really. It's just to change directions. That's really awesome. We'll see if we can eventually master that. playing for some reason. I don't know why. That's funny. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. Yeah, he's been hanging out here on the stream for a while. I really like the design of Alolan Meowth in Sun and Moon, but I'm not a huge fan of... I mean, it's, I think that Alolan Persian's design is pretty hilarious, but I always really like the, the design Ready, of uh, set, go. Alolan Meowth. Um, your partner's sister needed someone to watch her cat overnight, so now you have a cat that's not mine, mine and <laughs> that's not yours in your office. Nice. You trust him, but if he eats your cables, 
That's funny. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> Is that what you said right before you closed the door when you left the cat there? I trust you. If you eat my cables. That's funny. <laughs> Rigged. No, we can do this. We got really close a couple of times now. The same thing happened in, in China. Um, but, ooh, China is considered an expert, of course. I think this is considered an idiot. Difficult to us. Medium my ass. Checkpoint. It's hard. Partners currently in the office watching, and they've been chilling while you've been streaming and doing D and D playing. Nice. I've been wanting to get into a D and D campaign, and I just got a brand new job, um, and a bunch of people at work run regular D and D campaigns. So it could be kind of fun. I've never done it before. Never had a group of people that uh, wanted to get together and, and do that on the regular. And I've never like created a character or anything, but I've always been really interested in it. It's really cool. Yeah, China is easier than Kenya, definitely. But uh, the China track is actually quite difficult in general. I remember it being very difficult, and I remember really liking it, but I remember it being very difficult as a kid as well. Yes! That's the key. You have to use your opponents to fight. Yes! Oh. Rigged. Again. <laughs> hard luck. It's hard. <laughs> That's tough. That's tough. Hmm. Oh, that is a lovely drink. What is in that mysterious? It's a Just warm. Cheers, folks. Warm eggnog, spiced rum, nutmeg. You got something to drink? Clink. Mmm. Delicious. Nice. It's totally Ready? Ready? Set? Go! Oh, nice. Once you nail the drifting, China's a breeze. Ah, cool. Once you switch your work shifts to days instead of nights, you're going to start doing planning of your own because you want to try DMing. Nice. Uh, there's a really cool tool that I've messed around with, not for the sake of learning how to, how to be a dungeon master or or how to even do a campaign, a D&D campaign, but it's called AI Dungeon. If you haven't used it before, I highly recommend just messing around with it. It's like a text-based RPG adventure generator, and the AI learns based on what you write. So you can write pretty much input anything. I've loaded a bunch of, and I've said this before on stream, I've loaded a bunch of recipes into one and it learned how to write recipes. The AI learned how to write in my style. So I've also loaded a bunch of Seinfeld scripts into it and it started to write a Seinfeld script that was not funny. It was called Kramer Goes to War. It was quite sad. <laughs> but it was just uh, learning from what you input into it. And the cool thing is that there are campaigns, test campaigns that you can do where the AI acts as the dungeon master and you can act as the player. Um, and vice versa. You can have the AI act as the player and if you're practicing DMing, then you can... Uh, I mean, it's not that hard. You just click on someone's profile and click message and you can just send them a DM. But um, no, if you're practicing dungeon master, then you can you can use this tool to like help you. Um, I guess anticipate like, player choices and stuff like that. It's really, really cool. Um, I think it's got a lot of potential, just in terms of like being a writing tool. But, yeah, let's just, you know, we're just gonna hang out in Kenya for a while. <laughs> it should be a just chatting stream at this point, because we're not going to progress. I don't feel too much input lag, actually, to be honest. Um, the caveat here is that I used to suck at this game as a kid, and I still suck at this game. Not nearly as much as I did as a kid, but it's more like a nostalgic cruise. <laughs> exactly. 
Cruising, cruising, whirl, whirl, whirl. <laughs> it's basically the theme song. That sounds dope as hell. Ready, set, go! Yeah, it's a very cool tool. I highly recommend. Yeah, What's up, Panorama? Welcome to the stream. I want to check out this cruising blast game. Let's see what's on it. Let them get into an accident here. It's gonna happen right here too. Oh, right at the end. Not cool, not cool, not cool. <sighs> That's funny. Oh, there's a lot of nonsense in these games, Blake, for sure. <laughs> for sure. I think hard luck should be the new game over. <clears throat> right. Or like a bat out of luck. Like a bat out of luck. Ready, set, go! I just I remember spending hours and hours playing this game multiplayer with my cousin so and it was a lot of fun multiplayer. Are there any other sort of sandboxy racing games that someone would recommend, whether they're retro or modern, that have this sort of uh, ridiculous physics or their sort of unique bumper cars like physics? If so, feel free to recommend them. I'm always there to mess around with games like this. I know Twisted Metal was a series that I used to mess around with a lot as a kid, um, although I rented them mostly and didn't own them, so I didn't spend as much time playing with them, but very fun destruction, destruction derby. Stop games. Checkpoint. Ah. Ah, that's what's happening. My controller's dying. One second. There is some input lag. You are noticing correctly because it's actually not taking some of my inputs because it's not plugged in. Exactly what was happening. <laughs> That's funny. Tujiko san, welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. Welcome back. Yeah, we're ripping some cruising. Cruising world. This is one I grew up with, so that's why we're playing it today. I'm gonna be messing around with a few other N64 racing games. But yeah, we're definitely doing this one from the top, because my controller just tapped. Oh yeah, this feels so much smoother. It 100% was a controller thing. Let me 
do some shoutouts here. Shout out to Squeeze Teal. Shout out to Tojiko san. And to Lord Loki as well, if you're not following me. Oh nice, San Francisco Rush. I've heard of these games. San Francisco Rush, that's on N64 as well, I believe. And San Francisco Rush 2 and San Francisco Rush 2049. They had some really wacky physics too. Okay, we'll definitely have to check one, some of those out at some point. Uh, Idorama says, For non-retro, there's a game called Distance. Long drives with puzzle-like sections using a variety of physics stuff. Oh, interesting. Puzzle. A puzzle uh, driving game. Very cool. Hmm? You'd be down to try that one? Yeah, totally. It sounds interesting, right? Like, a, like I haven't really heard of a puzzle-themed uh, driving game. Yeah, it'd be cooler than racing for sure. And that's, I imagine, Distance, that's going to be a game on Steam or something like that. Or just a modern game. Very cool. Ready, set, Happy to do shoutouts for sure. Oh yeah, this feels so much better. Look at this. Look at this! It's night and day. Uh, I was eating popcorn earlier. The sun was in my eyes. The controller was in my eyes. Checkpoint. That sounds really cool. Uh, a game with long drives and puzzle sections. Boxes ever in any game. <laughs> oh, nice! You have it on Steam. You streamed this game once. Oh, you streamed the arcade version. Very cool. How did you do that? Was it arcade emulation? That sounds really cool. tojiko san we were just talking about how the different. There's some pretty big differences, I guess, with um, Cruising World um, and Cruising USA and Cruising Exotica in the arcade. And uh, Blake was saying in the chat that. Cruise and Exotica on the original arcade hardware could actually run it at 60 frames per second smoothly. It's kind of interesting little bit of trivia. We can do this. We can do this. That sounds really cool. Um, and Idorama is saying, yeah, I wanted a long driving game, and you found that, and the overall game isn't super long, but it's a unique experience. Very cool. See, that's another reason why I think Michelle would probably, my partner would probably like it, because it's not like a game you have to put too, many, too much hours, or too many hours into. But it's also something you can jump into and, and enjoy. It sounds really cool. Oh, Idorama, I also got your uh, Switch code, by the way. I just haven't gotten a chance to, uh, I saw it, and I just haven't gotten a chance to uh, set my number. But definitely down to, to set something up um, in the next little bit if you wanted to try out some of the levels and we could do like a Discord hangout co-op stream. I really like that idea. Avoid that 
hit box tree. Yeah. <gasps> I told you that was the one. Oh, whew. Jeez, how many times? <laughs> all good. You haven't been on your Switch at all. Nice. Mostly been working and sleeping. Cool. How's the, uh, how's the new gig been treating you? I imagine this is a busy time of year just because of the nature of the job. Back to work the next couple of days as well, so we'll be doing evening streams the next few days. Ready, set, go! Uh, yes, I'm glad we, uh, glad we got past that. Interesting. Cruising USA and Cruising World were censored on the N64 in comparison to the arcade. I can see that. Now I really want to try out the arcade port somehow. But like, in the actual arcade cabinet, I'd love to experience this game at 60 frames per second. You know, with the steering wheel and everything, that'd be really rad. I'm not huge on racing games, but I think that if there was one I'd want to play in like a kind of revamp remaster fashion, it'd be something like this. just gonna run a detour in the track here through a whole bunch of ancient, extremely rare artifacts. It's no big deal at all. No big deal. Nice, this production baking, so lots of work, early morning stuff. Nice, but it gets done quickly. That's cool. I hope you're digging it. I hope it's going well, and it's a good group of people to work with as well. Uh, it's only Cruising Exotica arcade version, which runs in 60 FPS. Oh, okay, sorry, it's not Cruising World. I was missing that up. It's such because the arcade version that Trophy Girl shows her bikini. Interesting. But then now anyone can just have a, a Twitch hot tub stream and 14,000 people will watch them in a bikini. Oh, how, is it, how the world has changed. And it's totally fine for them to do so as long as they're a Twitch partner and making money for Twitch. Oh, just saying. our music. Ah, <laughs> uh, the drifting is nice. I can't believe I didn't know that. The A and B drifting tech. Grew up with this game and that would have helped me so much. It's obviously very different than now. Um, the way that you drift in like a game like Mario Kart or something like that, but pretty cool. Holy shit. So what are the tracks based on, um, like obviously Cruising USA, all the tracks are different cities and states throughout, throughout the states. Um, Cruising World is all tracks based off of the different countries. 
Okay. In Cruise and Exotica, what are the tracks based off? That's nice. In Soviet Russia, world cruises you. Also, not to mention the last tunnel in Washington, D.C., in Cruise and World, where they had dollar bills with Hillary Clinton smoking a cigar <laughs> in the arcade game. That's funny. Uh, hey, Rami, you're saying good group of coworkers at that place, but a bit of a language barrier since you don't know much Spanish, but the other location will train you in other stuff. Cool. Cruise and Exotica are based off of planets and some cities. Oh, interesting. Because, you know, we do live in the Exotica star system. It's a very space-centric word, Exotica. I mean, I guess something on, an, on a distant planet is pretty exotic. Or something from a distant planet is pretty exotic. Make a joke like that on my stream, Hitorama. You think your router's broken? Oh no! That sucks. That's that's really frustrating. Do it now. So it's probably it's not an issue with the internet. Definitely an issue with the router. Tony Uncle Al coming in with that raid. Thank you so much. Raiding with that party at 13. I don't have any of my alerts working right now. Just today for some reason they're not working. But welcome to the stream. Tony Uncle Al, an awesome retro streamer who does a ton of really cool arcade stuff. And I imagine you were doing... Is this from your 24-hour stream? Or was that yesterday? But there was a um, Mario Golf Super Rush stream. You are number two in the world and I know that you've been working towards number one. Um, in terms of ranking competitively for that game. It's a really fun game. I play a lot of uh, uh, Mario Golf 64 with my partner on stream. And uh, thank you so much for the raid. Thank you for uh, bringing the community over here. Let's do a shout out. Um, earlier today, I started a full playthrough of Paper Mario on the N64, and I just got super nostalgic um, for some of the racing games I used to play on N64 with my cousins growing up. Because Paper Mario, I used to rent a ton of um, a ton of times to the point that I think I spent maybe twice as much of the the actual asking price to buy it on just renting it with my cousin just to beat it. Uh, nice. That was yesterday. Well, I hope it went well. 
Very, very cool. Awesome. Well, if you're new to the channel and you're just popping in with Tony Uncle Al's raid, my name is Matt, otherwise known as 3 at Moon. You can catch me here every single day from 6 p.m. Pacific onward, and I stream retro games, I do ROM hack showcases, we do randomizers of retro games where we shuffle around a lot of the, the aspects um, of the game, and I also play RPGs. We played Super Mario RPG in full, Ready? we've done Final Fantasy IX. Yeah. I'm also a session drummer and electronic ambient musician out of Western Canada. I drum in like funk and soul, 90s hip hop, and jazz styles. Mainly those are my, my favorite ones to uh, favorite styles to drum in. Um, but yeah, welcome to the stream. You can you can click that follow button. It'll let you know when and what I stream next. I've also got Twitter. There's a little bit of a lag going on in my stream, and that's because I'm streaming from a laptop, and right now we do have a goal on our Kofi page to try and get to a streaming PC. We're 14% there, and once we get to a streaming PC, we're going to be opening up a ton of the interactivity on the stream, we're going to be opening up um, the possibilities and the types of games that we can stream as well. Um, it's just going to be something a little more uh, reliable than a six-year-old MacBook Pro that has a lot of issues with OBS systems. Also, because I'm a drummer, what I want to do is get a streaming PC ready to go so that we can do live drumming streams, where I drum to my favorite video game music, my favorite water music, my favorite uh, dungeon themes, my favorite boss battle music, all that stuff. And I want to say thanks to the people who have been donating. The anonymous donation, the donation from Ruby P. Monster, the donation from Midori Skies, and donations from Lord Loki Asker. I really appreciate it. The link is at the bottom of the screen. You can follow me on YouTube as well and watch all of my streams in full on your own time. We shouldn't be having so much issue with this track because it's, it's marked as easy, but I don't know if I trust the difficulties. <laughs> so none of those were competitors. Uh, you seen this game before? Yeah, I grew up with this game. I uh, used to play a lot of it, this one specifically, but there's Cruisin' Exotica and Cruisin' USA on the N64, and they're all ports of the arcade versions. And we've actually been having a little bit of a convo about the differences between them. A lot of different band content for the arcade version. And apparently Cruisin' Exotica runs at 60 frames per second on original arcade hardware. Just Exotica, which is kind of, which is kind of cool. Nice little uh, arcade. Trivia tidbit. Um, if you're into arcade style games as well, or just classic arcade games, definitely check out Tony O'Malley's channel, because he plays a lot of really cool classics. Not just Mario Golf. I actually discovered, over there and at Abby Jam's channel, I discovered a lot of really interesting arcade games that I never just got a chance to play, or ones that I maybe played for a few minutes and just like go down these really cool nostalgia rabbit holes over there. Should I be drifting? Should I be doing this boost here? I'm gonna use the cars to flip. Yeah, I basically had a lot of fun with just the sandbox bumper car like physics in this game. So I'm, I'm really excited to try out San Francisco Rush. Like Blake was recommending earlier, San Francisco Rush 1, 2, and 2049. shoving his paws under the door. I can see it. Just like... <laughs> he 
you've seen Rush a little, and that game is good too. That's San Francisco Rush. Yeah, I feel like that could be a fun one. I'm 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 having a blast with like just the like, completely unrealistic nonsensical. Thank you to Darzington for the raid earlier too. I know that Twitch was having some issues with the raid, but thank you to those who came in with Darzington's raid earlier in the day. Thank you again to Tony Hall. I feel really funny too, I'm wearing my leather jacket, even though I don't drive and I'm not that into racing games, but I figured like I'm gonna wear a leather jacket on stream. This is the this is the stream to do it. I saw, I saw them colliding from um, a mile away at least. This might be it, folks. This is the run. There's a little bit of jankiness with some of that emulation going on here. Every time you hear a voice like that, it's fine. Never fails. Checkpoint. That's no good. get it at the end and it takes it away from us at the very like in the last second <laughs> yeah there's there's another sound clip that's like we're gonna crash <laughs> yeah the two wheel move that's one of my favorite things to do now i'm not sure if it's just um a psychological thing placebo effect but it feels like i'm overtaking my opponents when I'm doing that move, right? It feels like we're going faster. We're not like losing speed. It could be a placebo effect kind of thing. Where I just perceive a perceived bow effect. I just perceive that it's that it's helping us. But it's actually slowing us down. Alright, like is it faster to just do this? And only use that when we need to. Like overtake a person and do a flip. You can do a leapfrog basically. <laughs> I love this. There's smoke stacks and there's also flame stacks. Because it's like, yeah, the industry's booming. Whatever industry it is, it's booming. To, I'm trying to like find the right time to try the drift, but it's hard because I'm not feeling super comfortable with, with the drifting yet. I have a big thanks to Blake for letting me know you can even drift in this game. It's just like Diddy Kong Racing. I owned it and grew up with it and didn't know you had to keep tapping the acceleration button to, to go faster in it. until years later. It's like, what? You can hold the run button in Mario 3? Are you kidding me? You can fly? Oh! See what it does to us? See what this game does to us? Is, is driving us. Ready, set, go. Oh, 
here we go. Welcome to the island of Moscow. I always like the soundtrack in these games. Uh, Rush Pirate, welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. If we have a, a mod in the chat, we can get a shout out for Rush Pirate. Uh, yeah, we're rocking some Cruising World, just messing around with some N64 racing games for fun. Got pulled into it. This is a 100% nostalgia fueled stream right now. <laughs> Yeah, we got that steel drum action for sure. And being Portuguese, like, there's a lot of like music my grandparents listen to that's very similar to, the, to that style of music, so maybe it's a nostalgia thing as well. We got so close so many times. Let's try it again. on a tropical vacation to Moscow. I already knew I wasn't going to win this one. Yikes. That's rough. <laughs> What's the Russia? Ready? This is easy. So far, I've said medium my ass, easy my ass, and hard my ass on screen. All in this one screen. I just don't trust the difficulty. Um, yeah, I'm
Book yourself a vacation in the tropical destination of Moscow today. I do appreciate that you can just keep attempting the same track as long as you don't like give up. As long as you don't like end the cruise in the cruise mode. Do it now. Checkpoint. Do it now. Right before, it's always right before the finish. That's some bullshit. Yikes. Let's do a shout out for Rush Pirate here. Yeah, go follow these awesome streamers if you can because they're just great. They're great folks, and also Mighty Collector, I see you've been hanging out for quite a while. Thank you so much for the lurk, and thank you so much for just hanging out and for the support. We've had some really great, um, great streamers showing up on the regular. Ready? It means a lot. I met a lot of people. We almost hit uh, our one year anniversary, which is January 18th. Coming up this year. We'll be streaming for one whole year. And I've met so many awesome folks over the course of uh, this year. Some really amazing supportive folks, uh, other streamers as well, that just have some really awesome spaces. And it really means a lot that I've been able to uh, cultivate these friendships and community over that time. So. Uh, on January 18th to celebrate, we're going to be playing the same thing we played on our very first stream, which is another completely different run of Earthbound Randomized. Doing the Ancient Cave mode, it's going to be a full labyrinth um, where we take the whole game and compartmentalizes it down into like an entrance randomizer, so we could go through the door to leave Ness's bedroom and then um, exit outside the pizza place in three. And then we go into the hospital and then all of a sudden we're in a cave. So it's going to be completely randomized in that way. Random enemies, random items, and bosses, as well as boss health and stats. So it's quite an interesting experience. It took us about six streams to do, and I'm hoping to do that again in January to celebrate. It doesn't feel like a year went by, but it's pretty wild. Probably end up not playing any other. Any other racing games tonight? I'll probably just end up playing this tonight because it's a lot of fun. I was planning on playing a few of them, but it's getting a little bit late, so I'll probably just uh, roll this one for a little bit longer. Also, I always love this piece of music. It's called Shifter, but spelled S C H I F T E R. This is also an easy track, but the last one wasn't so easy. I'm 
whenever you get that drink, I love it. The janky glitches. so much stuff that can go on in these tunnels though. in our initials, folks. That's the Bizarro 3 up pew. Ooh, Abby Jams. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. Ready, set, go! Next we got the Chico side. We got a whole bunch of awesome streamers here. Money collectors, ciphers. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. There's a way to somehow play this one co-op with the stream. Yeah, you have to. You have to strategize to use those little pop wheelies right before you collide with another racer. Any big plans for New Year's? Yeah. 
Uh, not really. We might actually just go for like a walk with some sparklers and just hang out, stay in. Nothing crazy. Before COVID hit, uh, New Year's was actually a really fun thing. It was always like a big jam with friends. We can't really get together and do that. And my band, The Miles Sky Club, which you can find out on Spotify, Apple Music, and stuff like that. Um, we did an album release actually December 31st, 2019. In the last half an hour of the decade, of the previous decade, we released a album called Flight 960. If you look up Flight 960 by The Miles Sky Club, on Spotify or Apple Music or iTunes or YouTube, you'll we'll find it. Um, I do all the drumming on that album and it's sort of like a just jazz, soul, R&B, 90s hip hop, and funk inspired um, EP. It was our debut EP. We did a full, it was like a big house party before all this COVID stuff went down. It was a lot of fun. Can't do too much now, but I'll actually just drop uh, the name so people can look it up really easily. It's spelled a little differently. You can also check out some of my, if you're into electronic music, ambient music, and textural, just uh, sort of ex electronic experiments, you can check out my solo stuff at bassinspectra.bandcamp.com, which I was just posting those links in there. If you're interested at all in checking it out. Awful start. more than 20 years old, folks. I can't believe it. Does that make you feel old? We played Paper Mario earlier, and we started a full playthrough of it, and it came out in 2001. It's exactly 20 years old. It makes me feel old. like, and this is weird to compare, but almost like Super Monkey Ball, where like, you can't afford to make any mistakes. Like, there's just no margin for error. Even, like, this is an easy track? No way. Give me a break. Ready? Set? Go! That's it, that's the mistake we can't afford. Yeah. Okay. That was it. That's the reason why we're not doing well. Because we don't have the proper tunage. Oh! 
he's getting an accident anyway. <laughs> That's all I'm relying on is like the other the other racers to all get into a pilot. Tried a few more times here. Ready, set, go! Maybe they'll get the picture if I just hold my horn. The drifting, I'm definitely not working with yet. Not 100% at least. But we got this, we got this. It's all about leapfrog. It's all about the leapfrog.
graphics are pretty decent for its age, honestly. Yeah, they're not they're not terrible. Considering I think this was developed in 96 and 98, and the arcade version came out in 94. So if you think about contextually like what was around at that time, they're not terrible for standards, racing game standards, I guess. Okay, we can do this. We got so close. That was it. That was the one we needed to use as a grant. Here's the second opportunity. But no. Not enough. <laughs> Alright, we'll do one more and then I'll, uh, I'll raid somebody. But stick around. I, I want to um, say thanks to everyone that has been hanging out. Uh, it looks like Ready? there's uh, more than a few people streaming. But I will be streaming tomorrow at 6 p.m. Pacific. I'll probably be either doing some casual this, some casual this, or some casual that. Uh, maybe some randomizers. I'm not going to be continuing with Mario tomorrow just because I have a quite a heavy day in terms of like all the stuff going on tomorrow. So we won't be continuing with Mario, but we are in the Cooper Bros. Fortress. And uh, don't worry, I did save right before we are about to take on, like basically right after we got bought back uh, on the team. So we really got three parts of in a very short span of time. Breezer Studios, thank you so much for the raid. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. Hope you had an awesome holiday season and are having an awesome holiday. I was just talking about how um, I'm probably going to do some more Cruising World or some more casual N64 racing games tomorrow at 6 p.m. Pacific. We'll attempt this a couple more times and then we'll raid somebody. But I really appreciate you sharing the community over here. We'll be streaming today. And CJ, and welcome to the stream. Yeah, it's been a great, uh, it's been a, a decent holiday season for sure, I can't complain. A lot of restrictions, but there, those restrictions are there for a lot of people, so... It's like a solidarity thing, we're all in it together. Hope you had an awesome stream. Oh, yeah, thank you, uh, Tony Uncle Allen, who's your studios, and Darzington for the raids. Oh, <laughs> you copied someone else's message, that's fine. Welcome to the stream anyway. Right? We are playing bumper cars. <laughs> it's basically what this game is at this point. I'm trying to get to third place here in Germany, which is classified as an easy track, which I do not believe. I do not believe in midway. At least we're beating it midway, you know? got back into Death Store tonight. I don't know what that is. What is Death Store? I know Outer Wilds. I've heard of that. I'm seeing lots of people play it before. I'm not going to find Death Store. Hmm. I'll do one more time. This 
has got to be it. This is the one. It has to be. We just gotta time this perfectly. I don't know if this is the way to go about it, to constantly use this like really move, but it does seem to help us. into each other, but we can't hit a tiny little sign like that. Checkpoint. Oh, we might still be able to make this. to ourselves. Nope. Death store is pretty fun. You play as a little crow and work as a reaper. Going around collecting souls. Very cool. That sounds kind of cool. I'll check that out. I'm gonna check out Distance as well, that really interesting long drive puzzle game that Ready? I'm always talking about earlier Set, too. Go. I've got an ongoing list of games I have to check out, and it keeps growing, and I'm sure lots of streamers out there do, lots of people do, but I appreciate all the recommendations and learning about all these new games as well. So this will be our last attempt here, and then I'm probably gonna raid somebody who is streaming. See who is online. But stick around. And thank you again for those that rated. Thank you for the recent follows as well. And thank you, Blake, for teaching me that there's drifts in this game. If you're watching on YouTube, consider clicking that subscribe button. Click that follow button if you're not already following. And we're, I mean, we're almost at 700, which is kind of crazy. If we can hit 700 in one year, that'd be pretty bad. Yeah, exactly. Backlog height. You know, not every game is, is suitable to stream necessarily, but. I'm always looking for co-op games, I'm always looking for new puzzle games, unique puzzle games, because I'm a big fan of puzzle games. And any fun game, any type of puzzle game that's co-op that you'd recommend. Um, I can play with my partner on stream, that's pretty cool. Nah, this is... At this point, this is just a just chatting stream, because uh, we don't have... They are changing. I thought it was all over now, baby blue, but maybe everybody must get stuck. I don't want to drive Maggie's car no more, you know? I don't want a subterranean homesick news. And it's weird, um, it feels like the difficulty is arbitrary, um, because it actually does feel like each track gets more difficult as you play it, but it's telling you that you've got like an easy track, and then an expert track, over here, and then a medium track, it's kind of silly. Um, but yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's raid someone. It looks like we've got a few people online right now. You know what? Let's raid Dr. O. We haven't 
stop by on that, that channel for a long time. So let's go do that. He's got a really cool like intro raid message. I really appreciate all the folks that have been hanging out today for Paper Mario and for this, and the folks that showed up yesterday for our festive Link to the Past randomizer. And um, I'm trying to remember the second part of this game that we did last night. It was that, and then it was... I can't even remember what we did last night, specifically in the evening. We did Link to the Past. It wasn't Paper Mario, it was like a, it was a randomizer of sorts, but I can't remember. Oh, Yoshi's Highland, that's what it was. It wasn't, it wasn't a randomizer, it was the most chaotic uh, ROM hack of Yoshi's Island I've ever played. I played it about five or six times, and it's pretty funny that uh, I couldn't remember it, because I'd probably just block it out because of all the ridiculous frustration that comes with that game. But definitely check it out. I will see you all in the next stream if you're watching on YouTube, and I will see you all in Dr. O's chat. Thanks again for the raids. Next stream is at 6 p.m. Pacific tomorrow, and we'll be doing some more N64 racing games. See you then. Thanks again. Have a great night.